Uh, how important would it be to get a former Ohio State player? Kevin and Tony just addressed. Uh, see Brian Hartline, Tim Walton, James Laurinaitis. The the Brian Hartline career trajectory just amazes me, taking it all the way back to his final season at Ohio State and understanding that he opted to go to the NFL early with like whatever he had, 18 receptions the year before or something. I just was shaking my head when he made that move. And then he turns out to be so much better in the NFL than I ever anticipated. Not that I didn't think he was good, but I would have never said this guy's going to have a thousand yard receiving seasons in the NFL. And now he's the assistant coach out there. That's uh, the highest regarded of anyone across the country. Shoot. I'm on shows all week, eight, nine different teams. And when assistant coaches are brought up, he's at the top of the list. It's... Yeah. Well, I, you know, I go ahead, Tony. I was just going to say, um, that uh, I don't even remember. Oh, um, three. I you know you you'd probably leave for the NFL early as well, Mark. Is if, if you really, really, really did not want Terrell Pryor to be your quarterback, you probably would have left early as well. Sue, going in the same direction, general direction as I was when I went on my Brian Hartline career path. Does anyone else worry that Hardline might be feeling disgruntled by bringing in Chip Kelly instead of teaching him how to call plays? I don't want to, him to leave too. And before somebody takes off on this one, it's my thought at this point, and it has been for a while, that maybe Brian Hardline uh, is never going to be a play caller at, at this high elite level program. And for him to dip down into the low level ranks, I don't think he's about that that he may just skip the whole level to be a head coach. I'll just quickly say that this isn't a finishing school. You're here to win games today. And by, you know, I don't, you don't have time. There were a lot of people ready to run Ryan day out of town. You don't have time to sit there and say, well, we're going to go to play calling Oh five Oh, and we're going to teach you how to do this. I mean, you've, you got to be able to do these things in the weeds and when the bullets are flying and everything else. And trust me, Brian Hartline is being well compensated in his role. He's enjoying everything that he's doing. I'm going to, while I'm not around Brian Hartline, every, every minute of the, of the day of the week of the year, I'm pretty confident in saying he's enjoying his life. He is, he is, he is really seizing the opportunity and having a good time as, as things are going on. So I don't, I don't think that having this, you know, finishing school, as I put it earlier is necessarily the right call. Well, I think um, we talked last year about the build up to uh, seeing and perhaps can Brian Hartline be that play caller and Ryan Day was going to go through the spring about it and see how things went. He, like he never fully handed it over and would just talk about, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. And it would be nice if that could happen, that sort of thing. But he's never done it. And as Kevin said, this is not the place to necessarily learn. I do think Brian Hartland has such um, a high level of expectations. And I do agree, Mark, that he has said he wants to be a head coach. And whether that's college or the NFL, if he's going to be a head coach somewhere, Urban Meyer was the receivers coach at Notre Dame and got the head coaching position at Bowling Green. I think Brian Hartline could do better than that, but you're talking about, okay, Louisville, you know, something like that. And it's like, you're going to take a step down below what your standard is. Are you going to be happy with that? Or uh, would it just be better if to – it's going to be hard to become a position coach if we go from position coach to NFL head coach. You might have to go from position coach to NFL position coach, NFL OC, and then something. And if you if if Ohio State's not willing to give him this, um, nobody. I don't think the NFL is going to be willing to give him an OC spot either. But I do think this is an opportunity for him. If if to uh, we don't even know necessarily know if he wants to call plays. He has talked in the past like it's not that important to him. Um, but being a head coach has become more and more of a thing that he has thought about. I, I just wonder if he will be okay taking that step down and dealing with 
you know, you're not going to be bringing in five stars. You, you might, you might hit a couple of home runs like Dion in, in recruiting, <clears throat> but you're not going to fill out your room or all of your positions the way you'd like somewhere in a lower position as a head coach. We appreciate everyone being here at the Voice of College Football. The players, as uh, Steve has just posted in the chat, are on spring break. And uh, we continue here. Of course, catch Steve at Bucknuts 247 Sports. He's going to be a little bit more focused on the hard court here for the next few days, the next few weeks. We don't know. Next week, I could be possibly going to the first... First four in Dayton could be then maybe on to NCAA or possibly NIT. Maybe if they don't win enough games here and then the women will host first round action either Friday or Saturday of next week. And then if they win as a two seed, you would figure they would make the second round would be either Sunday or Monday, probably there at Value City Arena. So that's going on and state basketball tournament is also going on. They have a, uh, uh, a guy who signed with Ohio State, Colin White, uh, from Ottawa Glendorf up in northwest Ohio. Uh, he had 37 points in a regional semifinal game last night. So he and his team are moving on uh, one step away from getting back to the state final four. Kind of a cool note uh, that that just happened yesterday. And uh, he's sticking, at least for now, with his commitment to Ohio State uh, despite the coaching change. So we'll we'll see how that all pans out. Tony, what's going on with you this week? Oh, and there's Pro Day next week too, isn't there? Is that right? Or is it the following week? Uh, Pro Day on the 20th. Um, That's next yes. Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday yeah. we'll be there. Um, I'm hoping you missed that. So. No, uh, we'll Marvin's be there. Not, Marvin's not going to do anything, and they don't really have any high draft picks otherwise. So it's like, eh, whatever. So. Steve, come on. It's the I'm best not day no of the year. Buckeye. Except when it comes to going to stuff I don't want to go to. So, um, well, what's going on with me? Uh, we we put out a couple of um, Buckeye Weekly episodes this week. Uh, last, on Tuesday, we did a, a look at the two deep on offense. Tomorrow, we'll drop one looking at the two deep on defense. Just what we've seen, the way things are shaping up right now. Um, I think this week after I'm going to try to crank out a uh, what I know, what I think, what I wonder on everything that's going on. And uh, be posting some notebooks at uh, BuckeyeHuddle.com. So look for all of that. Kevin, what's the good word this week? Yeah, earlier in the week, I looked at the upcoming 2024 season, the best quarterbacks in the Big Ten, not at Ohio State, came up with five names there. So that is on the Big Me kickoff that I ran on Monday. Obviously, this whole... Running back coach thing derailed a lot of plans along the way, so been focused on that. I will go live on Friday at some point for viewer questions and things of that nature. And unlike these fake-ass Buckeyes, I am looking forward to Pro Day because I like standing in the corner and not being able to see anything, which is standard operating procedure for this event, but I can't wait. So, Tony, be sure to get my name on the credential list. I already I sent that in uh, this morning, actually. My favorite thing, and I always say this every year about Pro Day, is standing over there. Um, everybody has a – well, not everybody. Some people have their stopwatches. Some people have their, uh, their their cell phones trying to time 40s from a terrible angle through 40 different people for no reason whatsoever other than say, I had him at 452. I had him at 438. And still nothing ever tops back when Eric Lichter, the Jim Trestle Sports – a strength guy would run the pro day and he would tell the guys what they ran with his hands afterwards so we could all see it. And it's like, oh, Ryan Shazier just went a 4 4 2. Those were the good old days. Um, though Shazier obviously was a, an Urban Meyer pro day guy, but you get the idea. It was always nice to, that's the one thing that people want to know, even though now you ask players, have you even run a 40 at Ohio State? No, they do all, it's all miles per hour now with, uh, with the GPS stuff on their chest. So, the 40 has gone the way of the dodo, but um, it's still nice to know. 